Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of The Tapestry. Uh, this week, uh, we have another wonderful array of players with us to come and play through a, a non, a non, like, established, well, I'll let Renna do the explanation, she's much better at it, I'm just going to stumble over my words, <laughs> but I'll introduce the other stuff. Uh, check out my social links, everyone, there's my Discord, Twitter, and YouTube, go and check them out. Um, if you join the Discord, you can talk about this game in the designated channel afterwards. Um, Twitter, send me a DM, I'll get you a game very much like this one, uh, although this game i believe is now full for the rest of the season this this game is full um however we do have a few other DD games uh, so send me a dm over there uh also uh please go and check out uh, our sponsors uh, the deck of many you may recognize their deck of many things uh, and i'm going to ask you to go and check out the deck of many animated spell cards which is they uh, currently have a uh, a promotion on at the moment on their website or I believe five dollars off if you buy the first bundle pack. So uh, go and check them out. Also check out Mage Hand Press, uh, who create uh, expansions for Five E. Uh, you can see us playing their Dark Matter Space expansion on Thursdays at one PM EST. Um, and uh, I there is a tweet, and I will use the tweet command as soon as I've actually gone and updated the tweet command with the actual tweet that it should be. Until then, hey Rene, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. I'm not dancing much because this this music is much more. This is not a bop. Mellow. Not gonna lie. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I usually pick bops for this show, but this one this one has to be. Uh, it has to be because today we are playing in uh, the playset Dynama. Uh, we have playset that I wrote earlier this year for a show on Scraticus Academy, and this is the first that Scrat is hearing of it. <laughs> Like, I even put the title down, Dynamatic, and it didn't <laughs> register with me at no, all. Your face is fantastic. I'm so glad. Um, yeah, so this is a playset that I wrote for Weave. Uh, I'm really excited about it, and we'll be diving in this week. Uh, we're playing The Tapestry. It's a lot of fun. We play in a different playset for Weave every week, and we're learning the game as we go. So we'll likely explain a lot of the mechanics as uh, the game goes on. But for the meantime, I'd like to go around and have everyone introduce yourselves and what you do, since this is a really awesome game where so many people can hop in. So uh, Matt, would you like to go first? Hello. Uh, I'm Matt Hoadley. You can find me on Twitter at Matt Hoadley. I do a couple of podcasts. Um, I, Hard Reboot is kind of my most active one right now. It's a ton of fun. We reboot a public domain property once a month, give it a fresh coat of paint, and just see what comes out the other end. Um, I'm also, we announced after last week's game, uh, launching a Twitch channel next week with a uh, cast member here on the Academy, Jordan Sanders. So look forward to that. I will be there. Yay. You got to give me them links, Matt. I want to link them all. Come on. Just, just okay. start firing them at me and I'll link them. <laughs> I will shoot them all to you. Thank you. Uh, and next we have Hapa Barbarian. Welcome. Hello. Hi, guys. I'm Kaylee Bray. I am the creator of Damsel's Dice and Everything Nice, the princess parody on YouTube. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, Nerdily. Well, hi, um, I'm Nerdily, also known as Natalie, and um, I mostly just hang out here and be goofy and chat. Awesome, and I'm here a lot too. Uh, I'm Renee Rhodes. I'm storytelling this game, but I'm also here on Monday nights. Look a little different though for that one. So long black hair, you know, raspy voice, stuff like that. Uh, I have a lot of fun streaming and podcasting. You can find my podcast, Fate and the Fable Maidens, a family-friendly actual play podcast uh, at Fate FM Cast on Twitter. Or you can find the podcast uh, that is in pre-production currently, Edenfall, which is based off of a Scraticus Academy show at Edenfallcast on Twitter. Or you can find me at RadianR on Twitter, where I post a lot about sushi, sparkles, selfies, oh, and gaming and podcasting and all of those other things that I do. So... <laughs> Without further ado, uh, let's hop into the game. Pee-wee and Marley, you find yourselves yet again surrounded by a new world. Yet again, Marley, this is not the Ever Realm you recognize. You are muted. 
Hi. Hello. Is that better? Am I alive again? Uh, uh, still not home. Still not home. I mean, she told us last time we weren't going to make it yet, right? Right. I mean, I wonder if there's a way that we can track our progress. Ooh. Can can you access a game menu at all, Pee-wee? I've never tried in this area. I wonder if there's a progress bar for us. Like, campaign progress, 33%. I mean, how did we access the menu in the last place? Did we access the menu in the Didn't you go into like a weird VR thing with your brain? Yeah. That was weird. Ah. <sighs> I don't suppose, huh. Renee, that the VR thing came with us? Oh no, unfortunately <laughs> the VR headset did not stick with you. <laughs> So, I remember we walked into a rainbow. Yeah. It was the only choice, right? We didn't have another one this time? No, just a rainbow. <sighs> I mean, I guess the princess wants us here. Hmm. You hear a shriek from just a few feet behind you. And as you turn and look, Marley... There is a small-ish, <laughs> we'll say medium-sized, it's a medium-sized monkey hanging from a tree. But it is not your average monkey. It is uh, mechanical, made entirely of metal with just this like reddish lens that wraps around the front of its face and it is just screaming at you. It's loud, almost like a siren. Not quite, though. Huh. Ah. Uh. I don't know. After what to a do. moment, another monkey comes up next to it and starts also screaming at you. Oh, uh, uh, Molly, what, what, what do we do? I don't think they want us here, Pee Wee. Run. Off to your right, you hear a crash, and it looks like somewhere off in the trees, one has fallen over as this massive machine starts making its way towards you. Yeah, run. Run, run. sounds great. Run. <laughs> you run. The opposite direction, I'm assuming. Of all of those things, yeah. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the monkeys continue to scream at you. Uh, one of them is is trying to keep pace next to you, and it's like leaping through the trees, just arm over arm, and it's looking at you the entire time. It never looks where it's going. It just looks directly at you. Still do, screaming. I, I had a gun last time. Do I have anything weapony? With me this you, time? You do have something weapony. You can choose whatever weapony thing you would like to have. Oh. I kind of want to spear this go round. Okay. Yeah. And I want to just like shove it in its face so that it like clotheslines itself. How do you find this spear? Because <laughs> you look different in this world, Marley. What do you look like? What What do you have on you? <laughs> I, I don't think Marley has really processed this yet, but um, Marley kind of looks a little fish person-y this go around uh we got some some webbing in the fingers some gills very slight gillage happening um kind of just a little blue everywhere uh still hair but it's like plastered down on her head instead mm -hmm. and real short uh i think she's just like instinctively reaches behind her because she assumes she has something and just grabs what she finds and just goes, oh, it's a long stick thing and just tries to do that thing that action heroes do to motorcycles. 
except head region of the monkey. Right, okay. Uh, I'm gonna have you roll me a, a stones challenge here. And Matt, uh, because you also created a Dynama character with our two, uh, two guests this week, you can find all of your bonuses at the top of your character sheet. Uh, this is going to be a stones challenge of two as you lash out at this this monkey in the tree with your spear. So for a stones challenge of two, uh, there are four suits and each of the four suits represents a different kind of strength or ability. Stones tends to be physical ability, so strength or constitution or athletics. Uh, in this case, it's a regular stones challenge, so Matt will be rolling a base pool of three dice uh, along with the bonus that he gets to stones. So whatever Marley has that is uh, extra to stones, he can add to his dice pool for this roll. His goal is to get two stones, hence the stones challenge of two but there's always a risk involved as he could potentially roll strikes and wound himself as well. So in this roll, we are looking for uh, fours or sixes. Fours are uh, what we have ported roll 20 to mean stones and sixes are weaves, which are successes when they are rolled. Now help me out here, Renee. Where am I finding this character sheet? Uh, it is the one that I sent you yesterday. Ah, gotcha, okay. One second. Sorry. <laughs> this is the first place that we've played in that is not in the app. It is a community playset uh, that I have written on my own with community built resources. And uh, there are a number of those that we may be diving into in the future. There we go. Found it. All right. Neat. That sure okay. is some numbers. That is, that is some numbers. And there is a four and a six, which means those are the two successes that you need. What happens as you hit this monkey? Oh, uh, so I think Marley just like is running, finds the spear, looks at the monkey looking at her and jumps on the next kind of stump in the ground, kind of sideways, clotheslines it, and then jumps back off of, back over towards uh, Pee Wee and just keeps running. Just letting the monkey like hit the spear, fling down to the ground and then just goes. Finally getting to be like all that prowess that she's got in her is finally starting to show through. Oh, yay, Marley finally gets to fight. Aww. Oh, she loves it. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> she gets this. And this is much, it's, it's much easier to take down this monkey than it was to uh, try and take down the motorcycle last week by punching it. Yeah, that motorcycle is mean. Yeah, so this monkey, still mean, definitely tries to bite at you as you uh, like lash your spear at it, but it it does fall out of the tree and tumbles to the ground just enough for you to get ahead of it. It doesn't seem to be disabled at this point, uh, but it is it is out for the count currently. You two are making good pace uh, running through the forest. You can still feel the ground just slightly shaking under you and you can't really tell what is coming, what is behind you. But you've escaped the monkeys for now. Um, and as you continue running, yes? We just had a whole bunch of hype. Uh, Gemsong comes in and donates uh, a bunch of cash. Gemsong, let us know if you want to do oh. any, don anything with that. Uh, uh, and uh, thank you very much, Mal Hadale, who gives Rowan and Lyra two advantages each. Uh, so, uh, wow. Uh, Natalie and Kayla, uh, Kaylee, that means uh, you can uh, roll twice and take the highest number. Great, awesome. thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mal. Uh, yeah, the two of you continue running until there is a break in the trees. And up ahead, there is a large field, rolling planes. You see more of these machines off in the distance, but far enough away, thankfully, that they are smaller and uh, not an immediate danger to you. There's The sun is starting to slowly ease down behind the clouds, closer and closer to the horizon. And up ahead of you is a stable. A number of horses gathered outside and a number of people seem to be gathered there as well. 
We should warn them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, yeah. I like it. Let's go. <laughs> they do the action movie thing where I'm just gonna change my hands from this <laughs> to this. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Lyra and Rowan. You see two people just booking it downhill towards the stable where you currently find yourselves. Lyra, what do you look like? And what is the first machine that you encountered? Uh, so I look very small, like wayfish, almost pixie-like. Uh, very, very long hair that's been just like bundled up as best I can to keep it out of my way. Um, first machine. Mm, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Something it could be anything. You yeah, have full control. Like, oh. Yeah. Um something twice my size, but moving like jerky. Uh dark, dark metal. Um you're not uh, that I'm not really sure how it's put together. Okay. Um eh. What? I think it maybe looked a little bit like a, a praying mantis a bit. Yes, let's do that. Yeah, but like definitely bigger <laughs> than any mantis Huge. has any right, right to be. And it had that like kind of scythe look to it, um, but it was very jerky as it came after you. Mm -hmm. um, and Rowan, what do you look like? And uh, what was the first machine that you ever encountered? So Rowan is a lot taller than Lyra. Um, she has a long like white braid over her one shoulder. Um, and she is definitely a little bit more muscular, but moves like she doesn't really know where to put her feet. Um, the first machine that she encountered was, um, it had a lot of legs and she did not <laughs> stay to count them. <laughs> Okay, that's fair. Uh, and both of you had a reason to be passing by the stable when uh, the machines attacked. It was unusual as machines typically mind their own business. There are a couple that are volatile or violent uh, that you have encountered before. This is different. This was machines moving in packs, groups, herds, and they were not friendly. Lyra, what was bringing you by this stable? Why were you traveling? I had heard that the people who owned the stable had just thrown away some spare parts and I was thinking I might be able to use those for the thing I'm working on. Very nice. And uh, Rowan, how about you? Um, I had heard of somebody who had been thrown from a horse in this stable, and I was coming to see if I could help them. Okay. Uh, it was an easy place to take shelter, and uh, sure enough, it, needs, it seems like there are two other people who are in desperate need of shelter as uh, these two figures just come barreling down the hill towards you. What's that about? I, I, I don't I don't know. Um, should we hide better or call out to them and get them in here? Yeah, let's get the door open at least. Maybe we'll all Maybe like hide in bit. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it locked? Is the door locked or? No, the door is not locked. Yeah. All right. I just want to fling it open. Yeah. Uh, this door flings open. Pee wee, Marley, you see it. I feel like <laughs> baseball style sliding is the only way to enter that door. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> baseball style sliding. I will let you do as you just like slide over this threshold, and suddenly it seems like the world outside fades away. In here, it's much calmer. It's much more peaceful. There's a, a fire going. 
over in one of the corners. Uh, there is someone who uh, who seems to have been wounded, but has been uh, bandaged up over on a bed. There's another person. Uh, sides of his head are shaved, and he has a, a his the rest of his hair pulled up in a small ponytail, and he is uh, sipping from a glass of water. Uh, looks up surprised as you burst in and there are a few other people scattered about the room as we like slide and i'm gonna try and close the door behind as me. you yeah giant <laughs> machine Ooh. also uh, yeah. loud monkeys <laughs> screaming monkeys howling monkeys uh Lyra and Rowan, could you both roll me uh, Flames Core Challenges? So a Flames Core Challenge is uh, that same base pool of three dice earlier. But for a Core Challenge, you only roll a fourth die if you are a Flames character. Uh, and so Rowan, I, I believe, am. is a Flames character and will roll yes. four. And so Lyra, you'll roll three. And the goal is just to get one Flames. That's all you need. And there's no risk of uh, being hurt in a core challenge. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so Rowan, <laughs> uh, those, those fives are all Flames. And in fact, that's very good. That's technically an epic success on this core challenge. So I can tell you uh, what I, the information I would like to provide to you and you can decide whatever you would like to do with it. Okay. Uh, but you know that monkeys tend to be uh, alarm machines. Uh, they are not typically very aggressive on their own. They can be annoying or obnoxious, uh, especially when they start screaming. But for the most part, their existence and their role in whatever ecosystem the machines work under, operate under, is to be an alert, an alarm to other machines uh, of any threats or dangers. Well, someone was somewhere they weren't supposed to be. Who? You all, if you ticked off the monkeys. Why Where can't we you? ever just land somewhere nice like a park? Good luck finding a park in these woods. We just arrived. It's our first time here. Oh, well, um, the monkeys are usually sentries, alarms. Was there something else with the monkeys? A giant robot. Something big. Oh. Well then. What did it look like? Big? Sort of <laughs> rusted metal, gigantic, hulking. Knocked trees down? Yeah, and you didn't get a very good look at details beyond that because moving through the trees, well, the foliage ex uh, obscured so much of the actual mech. Uh, so now, what do we, are we safe here or? Cause I got chased too. You you know the most about it, I guess. Are there more monkeys? Well, um, there are monkeys in a number of places. I I don't know how many would be around here right now. Have I ever seen anything like this Big Mac before? I would like you to roll me another flame score challenge, please. Okay. As we roll that, thank you very much, Germ Song, who also gifts a uh, a uh, sub to uh, to uh, Kaylee. Um, Kaylee, this means you have an advantage to gift or keep as you please. Uh, also, uh, we rolled out the auto successes randomly. Uh, Matt, you got an extra one, and uh, and Kaylee, Ooh. you got two. The dice favor you today. Um, 
These are mm -hmm. non-critical automatic successes um, that you can use on any challenge. I'm starting to keep track of all these presents I'm getting. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Uh, so, Rowan, with that role, it's it's hard to say. They don't have very many details, and you think maybe you would know what this mech was if they just had seen a little bit more or could tell you a little bit more. But they're so vague, they don't seem to know, and that makes it very difficult for you to parse out what this machine could be. Uh, anything else? Big? That doesn't help me much. Mm -hmm. Loud? Did it have, like, stuff sticking out of it? It broke down trees. And then we ran. We were already considering running when the monkeys started yelling. Yelling? Yeah. Lyra, how long ago did you arrive at the stable? And the same to you, Rowan. I would say it's it's been recent. I don't venture into civilization any longer than I than I have to to get the stuff that I need. Okay, so maybe you have it's you like, been? Is it just been a couple of minutes I, that you've I, been? I would say no more than a half hour. Yeah, brand okay. new. I think I probably got here about yesterday, if my uh, patient's already been taken care of. Then Rowan, I would say that you haven't had any issues with the mechs after finding some sanctuary within the stable. However, anyone who has gone outside or traveled very far from here at all has uh, definitely experienced issues Lyra included. And uh, you've you've seen several people come in forced to take sanctuary. Uh, the the boy with the the ponytail arrived uh, late last evening. Definitely a little worse for wear, but mostly scraped up, nothing too terrible. And uh, a family was passing through this morning and uh, ended up taking sanctuary here. And now, Recently, Lyra and these two new strangers. It's been safe in here so far. But there's been a lot of trouble in the area lately. From machines? Yes. Is that and not normal? Usually they keep to themselves. We don't bother them, they don't bother us. But they're big robots, right? I mean, yeah. Any idea what could have riled them up? They're robots and we're humans? That's never been an issue before. Mm -hmm. What well, is this world? It's a weird we way to react to that. We've been traveling from world to world, seeking out oh, okay. mistakes, glitches, problems. Oh, this is certainly a problem. This place Feels is like a though. glitch. It doesn't feel much like a video game. Do you have a start menu? Uh. <laughs> what? I didn't think so. Quests? Players? Anything? Yeah, neither of you would know much about a start menu, but sure, quests. Yeah. Oh. Lyra, sure. you've had you've had players visit your scrap heap sure. before. Yeah. And and Rowan, you've you've sent people on quests to get new medical supplies. That's built into the game. That's pretty common. Oh, sure. Are you players? You don't I... look an awful lot like the usual sort. <laughs> I suppose I could be considered a player and Marley could be considered a foreign NPC. 
I'm a quest helper. I'm DLC. Okay. You're already on a quest, though? Our game is broken. I guess it was ours. Certainly looks like it. It seems like fragments of our game have been messing with lots of other games, causing glitches, which is why we're seeking the glitches to pull our game back together. Great, so it's contagious. Oh boy. Yes, Rowan, it is. Well, how do I know I, you didn't bring it here? We got here like five minutes ago. Has it been going on before then? Has it? It has, yeah. It's been since yesterday. Um, oh, whew. So it, it is a bit odd, yeah, that they only just arrived. But... It, the way they're describing it, Rowan, you are on to something. It, it does sound a bit like a virus as you know them. Hmm. The game is sick. All these medical references that lean into Marley a little and be like, I really hope we haven't, like, Found our way into a contagion simulator. Oh, that happened to ever ever realm players one time. It was bad. Can you guys describe your game, and maybe we can understand what from your game has infected us? It's a fantasy mass multiplayer online game where people take on avatars and go on quests. Our quest giving princess has disappeared. She glitched. Do you think she's the one riling up the machines? The princess oh. would never. She well, might not she's have glitching. Met you. Patient zero, as it were. Mm -hmm. That assumes um, she's here and we haven't seen her anywhere else. What other parts of your game have you found in, in other, other worlds that have disrupted them? Maybe we know if we know what to look for, we can stop the machines from attacking us. Because this is getting scary. Uh, what happens other times? Peewee, there was like colors and static? Colors, static, uh, pixel movement, stuck pixels. Creatures and NPCs and uh, things acting outside of their normal programming structure. Sounds like what's been going on with the mechs. Yeah. How do we fix it? Um, usually I find my way into the center of things and there's usually a seven, a conveniently like seven space password needing entering and I type tapestry, which is the name of our latest expansion and everything writes itself. So where's the center of the mechs? Hmm. I don't know. Good question. Yeah. Lyra, Rowan, what kind of experience do you have with machines uh, just from your character's history? I have a lot of experience with machines. I I live in what I think is an old one that broke down long before anyone I know can remember. And I pick things apart to see how they work 
but it's all old stuff and all of the new the working the working things I don't necessarily have as much experience with. I'm sure I've run across a few machines in my time. Um, just, but usually things like small computers or aid equipment, not not large, towering, tree-smashing mechs by any means. The mech that I I live in, the old the the shell of it is pretty big. It's big enough for me to live in. I don't know, maybe somewhere in my heap there's a sign to where these new ones are coming from or what they're made of what they are it's a good thought I suppose that's somewhere to start how far is it from here to there not far. I I don't really travel ever. Only when absolutely necessary. So it's probably a six hour hike west. I don't suppose there's just a loading screen in between here and there, is there? Or a flight path? Or a uh, teleporter. That I encountered. <sighs> it's not really private. our game speed. <laughs> I'm kind of private. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, ask you both to roll me a uh, uh, flames core challenge again here, please. <laughs> Who's rolling? Uh, Rowan and Lyra. Sorry, Lyra or Lyra? Uh. Lyra. Lyra. Doesn't really matter though. Okay. Oh, oh. goodness gracious. <laughs> oh. Oh. That is uh, five successes on Lyra's roll. Um, Lyra, that fire in the corner is a quick travel spot. Nice. <laughs> and it quick travels to other fires. So, if you know of one, and on that roll, you can. <laughs> Anything, <laughs> any fire remotely closer to your your scrap heap, you can quick travel to. Uh, we can just use the quick travel point over there. Um, uh, I usually leave some embers burning just in case I need to get back to my heap quickly so we should be able to be right there in no time at all oh this is so nice fantastic and welcome in raiders ascension stories raiding in also big Ooh. thank you to uh sphinx Rall, uh, who uh gifts me free advantages smashing our stream goal for the session thank you very much everyone Well, uh, if we can just quick travel there, that would be fantastic. Yeah, uh, here's hoping that it hasn't been overrun by more aggressive mechs, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Does anyone have a weapon? What kind of weapons do you have here? Hi, are any... Marley, like, turns and looks at the people by the fire. Are any of you vendors? Uh, Kiwi, I want to go home. One person who's kind of like sitting on a, a pillow with like a big sack next to him just kind of goes. <laughs> what oh. do you need? Do you have a weapon for my friend? Yeah, sure. Uh, bow and arrow work? Anything, really. Cool. Do you have money? I'll take scraps, metal scraps, anything for trade. 
I have some scraps. How did you it. come from outside without a weapon? And I think at this point, he's looking at you, you Pee-wee. Uh, and Pee-wee does look a little bit different than all of you, just like the slightest bit different. Um, they, they're they not exactly wearing an outfit that looks like it has advanced anywhere in the game at all. It's not like there's no armor, there's no weapons. In fact, it looks very much like bland. Default option number one on all <laughs> options. <laughs> Rowan kind of looks at them critically, like, yeah, how did you get in here without... Hmm. Oh, I have a spear, and I hit a monkey. Okay. I suppose that's one way to do it. It stopped chasing us. I ran really, really fast. Okay. They're very good at that. Well, I will cover the bow and arrow unless you have scraps. Do you have scraps, Pee Wee? I do not know. I appreciate okay. that. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I'm just <laughs> I'm like doing the game equivalent of checking my pockets, I guess, which is <laughs> opening various bag <laughs> slots or inventory screens. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so you are able to um <laughs> you're able to pay for this bow and arrow and peewee you can equip it uh the the vendor still looks at you a little warily kind of confused but uh accepts this the metal scrap and settles back in by the fire says some begrudging last line about, like, next time come prepared. So you guys want to head to my my place, I guess? This is strange for me. Sure. Okay. This that seems good. Okay. Better than walking. Well. <sighs> yeah. You're able to go over by the fire and as you do uh, a map comes up it's suddenly like all around you it's very much an immersive map but you can move around and select the fire that you want to uh, quick travel to there and in just a moment the screen shifts and suddenly you find yourself surrounded by Lyra's home. Lyra, can you can you describe to us a little bit of what the inside of this mech looks like? How have you made this your home? Lots of fabric scraps. Uh, feels like it's almost like a patchwork quilt exploded on the inside of this crazy like metal carapace. And uh, I've got my little pit of embers smoldering so that I can get in and out as quickly as I need to. Um, lots of squishy surfaces. It looks kind of like the way the inside of a genie's lamp you think would look. And then there's a big part of it that's been transformed into almost a workshop. And there's just all sorts of bits and bobs and scraps and, and gears and things. And, and there's something that's covered over with a cloth uh, that is a strange shape. Okay, <laughs> well. Um, th this is m my house, I guess. <sighs> Cozy. This is hey. a nice, nice place. I am pleased it's not overrun with mechs. Me too! I'd forgotten that that was an issue and, until just now, so thanks for bringing that up again. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's, yeah. Um, well? Uh... This was a mech once. Can you get information about other mechs from a big one? Like this? I don't know how any of this works. Hmm. 
Marley Rowan's... just like knocks on the wall and then listens. <laughs> Not talking. Rowan... Rowan's kind of wandered over and they're just looking at the the seams on the metal, seeing if there's anything like poking through or wires that are exposed. Okay, uh, for anyone doing some poking about on this uh, mech shell, uh, if you could roll me a flames challenge of one. This is a standard challenge. Uh, so you can use your full dice pool for flames, that base three dice, and then whatever your plus uh, flames bonus is at the top of your Google Doc character sheet. No. <laughs> no. Ouch. Oof. I feel like Marley's taking a bit of a seat right now. Oof. <laughs> Wonder if I should okay. use one of my auto successes now since I have two of them or if I should save them. You totally can. You can. It's up to you. I feel like uh, this information is important, but Rowan got some good stuff. I got some stuff. I might have yeah. fallen over while I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that it's it's very interesting, this machine. Uh, Rowan, you find a panel that you think might have uh, anything behind it. Information, a, a screen, something. But as you open the panel, it just, like, wires start sparking out at you. Ah! Uh, yeah. Uh, sure enough, you're able to kind of find this this wire network behind the wall, but I'd like you to go ahead and just make note at the top of your character sheet that you have taken three strikes. Uh, Lyra, you can take one as well, just from the uh, the additional sparks coming out. Not too terribly bad, not, not bad damage. You can take uh, ten strikes before you take a wound, but... Uh, definitely hurt a bit more than you were expecting, and Marley on the other wall uh, knocked, and it knocked back. Literally just like a panel burst back at you, like sprung back at you, just barely holding on, and then when you hit it, it did not hold on, uh, and it just completely flaps you, uh, Marley, for three strikes. Oh no. Mar oh no. Marley's just laying on the ground, just goes, Peewee, it's happening again. I don't I... like machines. Ugh, are you all right over there? I'll be fine. Just let me walk it off and maybe punch it or something. <laughs> Sorry. You're all good. <laughs> I am very glad that I was respectful of... Lyra's play, Lyra space, and did not get shocked. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're able to kind of find though, uh, Lyra and Rowan. There are a lot of wires in here, and they seem to be just like a full network on the other side of the metal walls. Did you know this was here, Lyra? No, I feel like I've been all over this mech and I've never seen anything like this before. I don't know how I missed it. Huh. Uh, but I can take a closer look, maybe see what it means. I can be of any assistance. I'm just gonna get in there. Let me know. Oh, okay, yeah. Do you Lara. know anything? Sorry. Oh no, sorry. Who are you talking to, Rowan? Uh, Pee Wee. Do you know oh. anything about wires and such? Perhaps. I have a really good memory for random facts. I can make a roll to see if I can think of any useful facts that go. You, you can. You can make a flame score challenge if you want to. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. So you you do know a couple of things about uh, the mechanical inner workings of machines. Uh, thankfully, is knowledge that you were able to pick up at your warehouse. Uh, we, I mean, if we have access to the bus controls, perhaps we could get uh, we can figure out whether it's running on a CPU or uh, a smaller interface like a. Um, a chip. There is a large space here behind the wall, uh, Lyra, as you kind of lean in and uh, begin investigating it. And it's it's easy to look for whatever uh, Pee Wee is suggesting, even though their words don't make a ton of sense to you. Uh, they all are a little bit cryptic. Like, what's a chip? Um, definitely, definitely different. Definitely a strange person from a strange land. But as you start to pick through it, with that little bit of help, you're able to follow this, this network of wires, and they're all kind of attached to this large green that you're able to just like pull out and dislodge from the wall and pull out through this panel. Uh, okay. Uh, is this what you mean by a chip? <laughs> Possibly. I take it. Does it have inputs and outputs? Can can I do things with this? <laughs> Yes, it does. It does have inputs and outputs. In fact, uh, it's still kind of connected to some of the wires from the walls. Uh, you're able to disconnect them pretty easily. Uh, it doesn't seem, Lyra, like there's just a ton of... Uh, this network goes very far or farther beyond this panel right here. Uh, it's just kind of sheer happenstance, really, uh, that Rowan stumbled across it. But as you pull this... Uh, screen towards you, Pee Wee, you can tell pretty instantly a number of things. And we'll go off of the role that you just did because I feel like it applies here as well. Uh, yeah. This is a screen. It is an interface and it is not working. Uh, it does have this, the inputs and outputs, but it doesn't seem to have enough power flowing through it to actually do what it's supposed to. And in fact, it is not turning on. It looks very dead and unfortunately there is no way to input any information any passwords or the like from this interface as it currently is I think this object needs power to be useful I can try and see if I can rig something to get power to it I mean gesture to my workshop like I have some stuff I could try I'm, if it's not too much trouble yes no sure okay well um, I'll give it a go alright yeah uh, Lyra what, what what do you have here that you'd uh, try and, and power this tablet interface up with uh, I feel like there's been, there's a couple of cores that I have been experimenting with that aren't quite, nothing's really worked with what I want. The output isn't what I really need. So I, I like got like a piles of stuff that might have like a little bit of juice left, but I, I'm not sure. And okay. maybe there's something that's old that I can try and MacGyver in. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll ask you to roll me a flames challenge of one. Standard challenge, so uh, three dice plus whatever your bonus is in flames. Typo. It happens. All right, uh, with those two flames successes, uh, 
you're able to that one of the the cores does spark a little bit as you try and get these wires connecting between the core and the interface and you'll take that one strike of damage but it is not enough to deter you as you're able to hook this screen to a power source and the screen slowly starts to boot up it gives off a small backlight as it turns on hey hey it works hmm. i don't know how much juice it's got though so whatever you got to do do it fast uh i press buttons press buttons yeah okay uh you start pressing buttons it starts reacting to you the screen begins to change as you press buttons does this have you like see... a keyboard or anything like that uh, all of the keys appear to be directly on the screen. Oh. This seems to be going easier than other times. That's nice. I mean, Ed, we found the terminal much quicker this time. Uh, yeah. You also got punched by a wall. That happens all the time. <laughs> Hey, much uh, easier than last time, yeah. <laughs> we had to we had to go into an exploding mountain last time. Oh. Hey, Lyra, do you have any straps I can make this panel into like a shield thingy for me? Uh, sure. I think there's some leather scraps somewhere. I hadn't decided what to do with yet. Yeah, 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 here, here. And Marley's just gonna like post up behind Pee Wee and just be like working on this, watching him hit, watching them hit buttons. Yeah, absolutely. Do you wanna? You can you can put it together, okay? But do you wanna roll me like a, a flames core challenge to see how it looks? <laughs> oh boy, I really want to fail this, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, with that though, um, yeah, that's a weird roll. <laughs> it is a weird roll. I would say that it's probably not bad. It's functional. It doesn't look like it's gonna break, and you're able to get those straps on there and secure. They are wonky and lopsided, and this is probably the most awkward shield that you could have, but it should work. <sighs> Got a spear and a shield again. Love it. Are you yeah. feeling at home, Marley? No, this just makes me feel better. <laughs> and Pee Wee, you start to click through these screens. You see like these these maps. I think could be called maps. They're not anything like the map that you saw when you quick travel just moments before. It's just a lot of numbers and then a lot of code that you just don't understand at one point there's like a map and it has just like a, a red circling line around it and it seems to like blink with a number of dots every time that those that line passes over them there are lots of them That's well? showing us where the mechs are. Oh. I hadn't thought of that. I'm a little out of my depth here. This doesn't that look like any- That seems like a lot. Rowan, are you looking at the screen now as well? Yeah, I'm peering over Peewee's shoulder. Yeah. I don't really know much about it either, but I can kind of imagine. Like, oh yeah, dots, mechs. Gotta be the mechs. No, that, that sounds pretty logical to you. And actually, as you begin to like look at this map and piece it out, it does kind of look like the map that you used to navigate to the stables. It's not the same, absolutely. But you can kind of recognize some of the land masses that it seems to like have recorded. And sure enough, you can hmm. guess where the stable is. You can guess, well, okay, that big dot nearby must be whatever mech that Pee Wee and Marley saw earlier. And beyond that, there are a number of smaller dots, maybe the monkeys. And beyond that, more dots scattered across the rest of the map at and around the stables and beyond at and around the, uh, the location you're currently at. Uh, 
closer to the center of this uh, the circle. You do see a number of dots not far from where you are. They aren't closing in at this point. Just there. Stalking. Patrolling. Do you typically have neighbors, Lyra? Not this close. That's why I liked this spot. If we work off the theory that the glitch will be at the center of the robots, we could use this to figure out the center? So, Sounds reasonable. Yeah, so where do we go then? If, if we're looking for the center... I'm going to try and rotate 180 degrees and see if the dots rotate with me. The dots do not rotate with you. Uh -huh. Do you have like a north direction that people usually, I don't know, align maps to and things like that? Like a compass? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Of course. Sure. Which way is it? That way! <laughs> <laughs> then if I assume that this is pointing north... We need to go that way? That's where... Are we going for, like, where the most mechs are or where the biggest mechs are? Are they two, definitely two different places? There are a number of concentrations of these dots. Uh, it's They're hard to tell exactly like where. There's definitely some that stand out as bigger, like the one that uh, is over by the stables. Um, there are a number of small mechs typically around each of the bigger ones as well, just like as if they're all traveling together, but it's hard to distinguish if there's like a specific place that the mechs are generally bigger or more of. It's more like wherever there are big mechs, there are a lot of mechs. Is there any other discernible pattern? Turning the screen towards Lyra. Hard to say. Uh... There, there's one that stands out as being not a pattern, but as being the only one to really break the pattern. Uh, you see a number of uh, these, these red dots as this line passes around again. And there's one that's just slightly orange. It's still big, and it's not any bigger or smaller than some of the other dots on there. But it's just like slightly off color. Hmm. This one's different. Should we just do the different one? Because that's, that's what you said is the issue, right? Is that something is out of place and that's what's making everything glitch? Yes, and it's usually a different color. Oh, really? Well, that's oh. a different color. You sure the screen's not just busted? No. Oh. <laughs> Marla I... reaches over and just like taps the screen real hard right around where the different dot is. It does not do anything to it, Marley. Seems fine. I mean, that feels like the only lead that we have. Can we tell where it is on the map based off of the landmarks that we can see? Yeah, it's it's actually over kind of near the stables that you were at earlier. It's um, It seems to be in the forest far behind whatever uh, large mech they had previously encountered was. Hmm. I wish I still had that jet bike. 
A what now? A really good horse that flew. Yeah, that sounds useful. I don't know how that would work. No, nah, it doesn't matter. Our noodle guy has it now. I bet I could build one if I really tried. That's you would be my hero. Oh, it would take way too long. I think probably both Pee Wee and Marley are looking at you, Lyra, with this big eyed expression. Because <laughs> you guys have like two months, because I mean, I would need the materials, I need to make a plan, design it, figure out how to make it work. Our, we're, we're on a clock, aren't we, Pee Wee? Probably. Oh. Let's just go punch this thing the normal way. Marley is very disappointed that she does not get another another flying horse jet bike. Admit I'm so sorry. Admittedly, this place doesn't seem to be a, quite as on the clock as the last place, which was literally exploding. That's oh, true. Haven't noticed any of that lately. The last one was real stressful. I couldn't focus on things. It was bad. I could focus on things. It was still bad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this thing looks like it's close to the stable, so I guess we could travel back to that fire pit if if you if we're just gonna go there. Do we still need this this tablet, this interface? Because I don't know how long this power source is gonna last. I is that is it port is that portable like it looks like it's still like stuck to the wall with all those stringy things I mean I guess it's kind of attached I mean it doesn't Didn't look you make that into a shield though You make something else into a shield I did Marley holds up the panel that fell on her earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Vengeance. I mean, okay. with the, I mean, they don't seem to be moving much. We could just, you know, leave it. It's not like it's interactive. I say rotating it again. <laughs> as long as we have a general idea of the thing that is, you know, we know, as long as we know where we're going, I guess. The stables, you say, right? Well, I mean, well, right, and then it's, it's it looks like maybe it's right where you guys came in, because you said you there was something really big and it was over by the stables, right? And there were like a bunch of little things around it, including yelling monkeys. That's true. We ran. Yeah. Doesn't it? Doesn't that kind of look like this cluster here might be what you're talking about? Oh, disappointingly. Let's take it and scrutinize it for a second. I mean, I I guess yes. Little dots are monkeys, big dots are, are the... Yeah, I, yeah. The other thing is we can almost always tell when something's glitching right around us. It's not like a subtle effect. It's true. Could you have been distracted by the thing coming at you, though? Well, that's true. And that's a little bit further back in the woods, I think. So Yeah, it's, it's not exactly there. It's in that general direction, I think from what I can see. Well, one time an entire high school turned into static and one time a mountain tried to explode on us, so. It seems well, those things sound concerning. Yeah. <laughs> I would say concerning is a little far down the list of words I would have used to describe it. Terrifying is a little higher. Marley's I'm been worried. doing this longer than I have, so. That was wrong. I just said I've been doing this longer than I have. <laughs> Excuse me, I need more caffeine real fast. <laughs> Rowan kind of puts her hand on your forehead. Are you... Are you... Okay. Sorry, Pee-wee's been doing this longer than I have. I can't even imagine what it's like for them. Like I've only had a couple, and they've been bad. Actually, it kind of got bad when I found you, Marley. Before that, it was all... Going on dates and going to fairgrounds. It was quite nice, in fact. There was one time that we fought a goblin army, but even that had a pleasantness to it. 
Look, I'm sorry I ruined things. <laughs> so we gotta go back to the, the stables and make our way towards whatever this potential you said glitch glitch is glitch. yeah glitch. yeah I just want to go home but we gotta we gotta get there and the glitches are the way out okay so I guess we're going back in the fire Unless anyone has any other ideas? Okay. <laughs> no, I, I tried really hard to think of another idea, but I've got nothing. I'm gonna go over to my workshop before we go, and I'm just gonna grab this bag of, um... Sh uh, I have a bag of gears that I have sharpened the edges of just in case I need to throw pointy things at things. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Very nice. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Lyra, do you have any bottled water? I'm running low. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, hang on. Uh, yeah. Great. Here you go. Rowan opens her pack and there's a number of bottles of water in there stuffed in with some bandages and kind of a a weird looking flask. Um, no she judgment. just kind of sticks it in and zips up the pack <laughs> again and shoulders it. All right, as, I'm ready now. Yeah, as you go over to the fire, you have the same experience. You're able to pull up the map, locate the stable's fire and uh, Transport yourselves back quickly as the loading screen shifts and you arrive back in the uh, the stables. And immediately when you arrive, the, uh, the vendor, the merchant who was there earlier just says, Oh good, you're back. Want anything else? Did you bring money? <laughs> no? Nah. What you got, though? Plenty. And uh, he kind of opens his bag and, and sets out uh, these this piece of shoulder armor uh, across that goes across the chest. He pulls out a, a like a vial. It's um, it's kind of got this like reddish tone to it. Uh, has kind of a sweet smell to it. Uh, and he pulls out. Uh, a dagger as well that he places on the ground and pulls out a couple of more things, bits and baubles, but those are primarily his uh, most shiny wares. How much for the potion? Ah, good eye. Good eye. Uh, ten coins or its weight in scraps. Do I have ten coins? Sure, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So. It's but that's actually pretty cheap for uh, you yeah. know. Uh, so I I will I will buy the potion. And find a spot in the find a spot in the pack full of water bottles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know that it it likely has some sort of minor healing properties. It's probably not incredibly potent, but it might help in a pinch. Anybody want anything else? I, I, I am still lacking on the money front. I always ask you how much it is. How much is that shoulder armor? Ah, uh, 30 coins. Or it's weight and scrap. I don't know if I have that much scrap. Marley says, one second, and is going to run outside and look for a monkey to punch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Roll me a, uh, a Gale's core challenge for perception, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, that's 
that's two successes. That's enough. Uh, you are you're not able to find a monkey, but there are a number of bird mechs that are kind of on the ground, not too far away from uh, the stable. Chickens, like like a bit like chickens. Yes, they're a bit like cuckoos. Mm. Marley will take them out and bring back in the scrap. <laughs> Please roll me a standard stones challenge of two. Is Marley kicking chickens like Fable? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't seem like it, honestly. Because <laughs> <laughs> the villain no. will come for you. No, that's that's pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. That's a, an epic success, Matt. So Get Marley's going to do this without turning into Link tormenting a cuckoo and getting pecked <laughs> to death. Uh, is just going to try out this new sword and shield and like spin strike all of them and then just bring them back in. Just on the <sighs> shield and just dump them in front of the vendor and be like, is that enough for the shoulder armor for my buddy? Uh, the vendor does not respond with words. Uh, his face looks just kind of not like it's not even shock. It, it's not quite disgust. It's just I can't handle this right now. And hands over this shoulder armor to you without any further questions. Here you go, Pee Wee. It'll look good on you. Thank you. Strap it on. Kaylee, I think you were lagging out a little bit there, but did you chime something in? Nope. I can hear Am you I still now. Lagging? No, you're good. Good. Great. Awesome. I'll strap so on. now you have armor. Yeah. Just on my shoulder, which is the most important place to have armor. Yeah, you're looking maybe like a little bit more a part of this world now, Pee Wee. Just a little bit. That's really all you needed, right? It doesn't take much to go from like all of the base selections to like, kind of look in level two. Ooh. Here you go. Oh, wild. I believe I found a, an item that's not junk. Hey, junk is great. <laughs> all right, well, you look like you are not gonna break the first thing we run into, so. I might break, so I'm probably going to be, like, far off and hiding behind someone, just warning you all in advance, you know. Are we, are we ready? Are we, should we just? Please, let's go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> let's do this. I, I will, I will stay near the back with you, Lyra, as I hold my bow. Okay. <laughs> You're able to uh, journey out from this this stable. Um, as you you start walking towards the forest, did you keep the the interface with you to try and uh, map this out? because it was we were able to detach it from the wall, right? We weren't sure if it was still attached by wiring to. Ah, yes, yeah. So you were able to detach it from the wall. Uh, you would have had to use some of those wires to hook it up to the, the core that you mm -hmm. used as a, a power source briefly, but uh, it, it's somewhat portable. I, I, yeah, I would have wanted to take it with us. If we could. Okay. Yeah, you can... Uh, <laughs> you see a small battery sign in the corner that's starting to blink uh -oh. red, but it still has power for now as you set out uh, from the stables. Can we like drop a flag on my map? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as you start to walk away, uh, the, uh, the boy with the ponytail runs out after you. And he just says, "Hey, uh, are are you gonna are you gonna go out where the mechs are?" Yes. Yeah. yeah. I suppose so. 
Okay, cool. You know what a bad decision that is, right? I just kicked those birds right in their tails. It was fine. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I mean, sorry. I'm sure we'll be fine with the mighty chicken killer. Chicken chaser? <laughs> Why? Hey. Why are you asking? No, just, uh, well, things have been weird lately, and I don't know much about the mechs myself, but I have friends who, uh, I've done some research and, and know more about them, and I, well, wait, did you get that from a mech? He looks down at the screen. Maybe. I, I well, don't need it. I, I just, I was curious. It, it, it's like a, a, a map, right? It has like files on it and code, everything like that. Do you know someone who knows the code? No, we're, well, we're trying to crack it, but point is, just be careful. There's a huge network of mechs out there, and though we don't know a lot about it yet, I, I think they're all connected in some way. So whatever you're going to do, even if you have a chicken stomper or whatever, be careful, okay? It seems like you've been researching these creatures. Oh, I, I, I mean, I haven't really. I've mostly, like, gathered things for my friends to research, but, uh... Just observed some. Been around the block a couple times. Is there anything you can tell us other than they're connected? Or can you take us to your friends? <sighs> My friends aren't home right now, or else, yeah, I could. So, um, trying to think of what they would say. Uh, uh, yes, so they're connected. They're connected. It's like a, it's like a network, like um, a spider web. Do any of you know much about the Dynama? The what? I know a little. Like the, there's like a, a magic that just hangs over the world. The, the Dynama. Some people can see it, some can't. But it's all like connected it connects everything uh you me the the trees the mechs have something like that too except it's not visible to anybody except well you can kind of sort of see it on those screens sometimes right like it's a it's all connected like a massive network does that make sense yeah Yes. Well, like a hive mind? Sure, a little bit like a hive mind. Yeah, a little bit. Huh. I guess my point is if they notice you, they all might notice you. And don't really know what you're going out looking for. I only heard a little bit bit of your conversation, to be honest. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, I just did a little bit. But, uh, whatever you're trying to do, it could affect all of them. If you find that one place, whatever's causing the problem. So if we fix it, it could be a good thing that they're all connected. Yeah. But if they're all connected, that virus, that glitch, it'll spread through all of them. Am I already have done so? Hmm. So good luck. That's all. That's all I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, so just, yeah, have fun. Um, don't die. <laughs> Thanks. Huh, sure. Sure. Thank you. That's what Tony we try for. Ponytailed boy, perhaps you should come with us. 
Me? You seem like a a a a, a, a mech techie. Oh, uh, no, mostly I hit things. <laughs> I can do some tricks with the dynamo. Um, and he, like, reaches down to the ground where a small flower grows up and blooms. And he plucks it and hands it out in front of him. Just tricks, mostly. Rowan smiles at him. It's pretty cool. Thanks. I, I look at my team. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, get, uh, I mean, uh, I you can't under. I don't know. Us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And he's like, I gotta go uh, get my pack. And he runs back into the stables for a second. He comes out a minute later with this, like, kind of backpacky uh, thing on. And he has a, a short sword strapped over his uh, shoulder that hangs by his side. And uh, he says, Okay. Uh, what are we doing, though? I. I just said yeah because it sounded fun. Um, God. We're heading into the middle of the mechs to try and find the weird thing from another world, which is causing everything to go weird. Okay. Yeah. No, that sounds uh, completely legitimate. Um, okay. So the one thing I ask is uh, if we find anything add uh, informational that I can take it with me to give my friends later if we learn anything it might help us figure out what's going on all across the whole world what how the mechs interact with the dynamo and interact with humanity and everything like that we've just had a bit of a run-in with them a while back and have been trying to figure things out since okay i th think that's a wonderful idea okay seems reasonable cool. to me Right. Yeah, seems good. What what's uh what's what's your name? Jaden. Okay. Well, I'm Marley, and this is my buddy Pee Wee. Lyra. Nice to meet you, Marley, Pee Wee, Lyra. Rowan, it's a pleasure. Rowan, hi. Yeah. Let's go find a glitch. Yeah, lead the way. Okay, here we go. I guess. Who's actually leading though? Because I shouldn't, because I um, am easily <laughs> injured. Do you have the tablet? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm literally just. Who wants to actually? Because I. I should. I. Mm -mm. I'll navigate. Marley, okay. you want to lead? <laughs> yeah, Marley will just like take point. Chicken stomper. Here you go. <laughs> oh boy. Rowan. Uh. <laughs> let's, let's do just like a quick uh, flames core challenge to see how easy it is for you to navigate with this map it is a little bit different sure that's four dice correct yes four dice for you and you just need one flame so a, f a five or a six mm. okay so Unfortunately, it is very tricky to actually give directions from here. Uh, you can pick a general direction and walk that way, but this isn't like the map that you have that marks roads and uh -huh. uh, real geographic locations in the world around you. So it's harder to actually pinpoint specific locations. So, you know, yeah, probably off that away. Kind of that way. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere to start anyway. Over there. You do notice though, as you look at this, that the, the map has shifted. When you moved, uh, the center of the map moved as well. So you no longer uh, appear to be in the surroundings of 
the uh, the mech carcass, for lack of a better term, that Lyra lives in. It's, that, that sounds so homey, I know. Uh, but you do recognize that, yes, okay, this is the stable and everything surrounding it, but okay, at the center. And so... So the center of the map where it used to be over the, the Lyra's home, it's now kind of over us over a little the more. Stable. Yeah. Okay. Okay. As if it Do I see the it. orange dot? Yes. Okay. Any more orange dots or just the one? No, just the one orange dot. Yeah. Okay. That's a good thing. Well, I agree. Yeah. Okay. You make your way into the forest. How are you traveling? Is this a cautious trip? Is this a trudge ahead as quickly as possible kind of trip? I like I to am... think I've got an arrow knocked. I want to be. I want to try and be quiet. Agreed. Okay. If Chicken so... Stomper can manage. <laughs> Very valid. We'll have to ask when Matt gets back, but for the meantime, let's go ahead and, and each roll a Gale's challenge of one to see how uh, your stealthy progression goes. Now this is your base three dice plus whatever your Gale's bonus is. That's all of us, right? Yes. I cannot roll freeze for the life of me. At least I got some sixes in there though. You rolled so many threes last session. I was so proud of you. We didn't do any Gales checks, though, did we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was a couple. I didn't roll a single three. No. <laughs> Lyra, there's Aren't you... just, like, the littlest bit of clanking as you move. Uh, all of those gears, every time they shift, they just go kink, kink, kink. <laughs> Great, so... we have Chicken Stomper and Jingle Bells. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> This is my currency. <laughs> oh no. Everyone else is thankfully able to move a little bit quieter as uh, you walk into the trees. As you as you start to progress uh, further in towards whatever this yellow, this orange dot is, uh, every now and then you hear things around you move. For a moment, the bushes rustle and it might be a mech, but instead a little rabbit hops out across the path and into another bush and then they're gone. A twig snaps and it's actually just a deer off in the, the trees a ways away from you. But if everyone could roll me a uh, Gale's core challenge for perception as well, please. A three. A3, yes. Yes. That's Ow. <laughs> but oh. a three. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, since this is a core challenge, there's no risk of, of injuring yourself. So uh, <laughs> thankfully that is a success despite looking pretty dire. Um, and uh, Lyra, that was really good as well. So I think that as you continue progressing, uh, both Pee Wee and Rowan, you start to match the map up with your progress. It's a little bit easier to navigate. And you can see dots that represent mechs and they seem to be directly over you. And Lyra, after a few moments, you look up and you see these large bird mechs swooping overhead. There's mechs above us too. Uh, Marley, did you, uh, can you roll me a, a Gale's challenge for stealth, please? Ooh, a Gale's challenge for stealth? Yes. So this a challenge of one. Yes. Yes, I can. Yeah, you're doing great. That's great. Totally fine. Uh, so is Jaden as you <laughs> progress pretty easily through this forest, uh, Lyra just clanks a little bit with gears. Um, there's, 
there's this mech overhead. Lyra sees it, notices it, and points it out. It doesn't seem to have seen you yet. As you move further in, you start to feel that tremor in the ground beneath your feet again. Kiwi is uh, considering the effectiveness of a bow and arrow versus a mech. And is hoping that there's some, like, video game wizardry there that makes it more effective than they imagine. <laughs> Here's hoping, because what? You've got a sword, a spear, a bow and arrow, and uh, some sharp sword. gear. Yeah. <laughs> a sword. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. M Molly has a shield. <laughs> it's a good shield. Marley. <laughs> <laughs> you hear another rustling in the trees. And this time, Lyra, through the branches, you see a monkey. Oh, crap. Rowan, it lines up to a dot on your map, but it was a little bit harder to tell because there are those bird mechs circling overhead, so it's easy to not be able to distinguish between the two. You're all very quiet, except for Lyra's gears. Lyra, what are you doing? How do you, how do you manage this? I, I'm like Scooby Doo style, like shaking. I'm so scared, and my pockets are jingling. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like trying to like <sighs> hold my pockets like tight to my body so that I don't jingle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I would. I would love to have you roll another uh, stealth. So uh, Gail's standard challenge of two here, because this is a little bit more difficult uh, since you were clanking the first time. Now remember you do have uh, advantages and auto successes, which you may want to choose to use as that would be think, a failure otherwise. I think I'm gonna roll at an advantage. Let's try it here. Okay. Alas. That's two failures, right? Can I also use an auto success? I guess <laughs> just burn it all. I'll. I will allow it. Yes, you can burn use it an all. auto success if you. Okay. <laughs> um. <gasps> and uh, yeah, with that, with just wrapping tightly enough around those gears, you can get them to all hold together and not move against each other. You all barely breathe as you pass this monkey and it doesn't seem to notice you looking the other direction as you continue forward, trying to like work your way around this alarm that you know could so easily be set off. Sorry guys. Everything's fine. It hasn't screamed yet. Rowan, you see that the orange dot is getting closer and closer as you progress. And as you look up above the tree line, you see this tall, massive machine. It stands a little bit like an upright bear. But it's it's longer and a little bit more thin. But it has that kind of like prowling nature to it. And it just it its head is just above the trees. Um I'll put my arm out to kind of like stop and point it out. As you look up at it, it shifts. One moment, it looks a bit like a bear, and the next, 
its head leans forward and its arms raise up a bit and it looks a bit more like some form of raptor as it just sparks with this static electricity looking stuff. Rowan, Lyra, it's unlike anything you've seen before. It looks orange, blue, brown. Marley, this machine is glitching really badly. Oh yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. Thing? Let's fix the thing. How do we fix the thing? Well, probably somewhere in there, there's a terminal. And somewhere in the terminal, Pee Wee can type in a code and everything gets fixed. So we have to get in that mech? I really hoped not, but maybe. And if it's a if it's a virus, can we heal it? Every other time Pee Wee's put in the code, the whole game gets fixed. Gosh. But getting into a bear that turns into a raptor that's taller than trees is probably not going to be easy. So how do we do that? Without getting everything in the forest coming after us. But if we're inside the mech, we'll at least have some cover? We just have to get inside it really, really fast. I wonder if it eats people. Oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm not testing that out. That's not, not an encouraging it. laugh from the storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Any ideas, Jaden? Yeah, I mean, getting inside of it is tricky, but doable. I mean, mechs tend to have some way in. Uh, as just a general rule, it's on some of the smaller mechs, it's just like a little, like, cap or hub or something but uh bigger mechs tend to like you could technically you could clean a mech out and like live in it but uh <laughs> it's this one is i'm a bit concerned about what you mean by glitching uh and the fact that we just watched it like change shape um that's not that's not normal um as a general rule, mechs follow patterns, like a patrol of sorts. Um, it's possible this one's patrolling too, but I just don't know because it's not acting like it should. I mean, I live in an old mech. I, I might be able, if just from looking at it, have like a good guess as to where an access panel might be. You, that is so cool. Right? Thanks. I think so too. <laughs> we have the screen. Maybe we could observe it for a minute and see if it's got a patrol route. Yeah. Has it kind of moved in a pattern at all since we've been looking at the screen? And it's definitely, this is the orange dot, right? Yes, this, this, this is one absolutely looks like the orange dot. Uh, Rowan, you only really picked up exactly where you were uh, not too long ago. Um, yeah. So it's hard to say exactly where it's moved. Um, mm -hmm. But if are you just kind of going to stay here and watch it for a little bit? Or what are you hoping to do? I think that sounds like a good idea. You're able to keep track of where all of the other mechs are on the screen. So if you do choose to stay still for a second, you aren't at too great of a risk. Okay. 
It feels a little tense as you wait to see if this orange dot at all follows any patterns. It's slow moving, it's big. But you think that it's following a circle, an imperfect circle, but a circle. And that it will cross the same path again and again. Can we set a trap? That's what I was thinking. Tripwire? Probably big for a tripwire. It's definitely too big for a pit. We could do that thing where we take a weak material, but we wrap it around its legs lots and lots and lots of times. Will it take too long, though? What if it calls the rest, like, more stuff to to us? I mean, how are we going to do that? It's not like we can walk in the sky or anything. We don't want to start wars. You look up They're... again as you hear this like crackling sound in the air and this this mech shifts again. Its neck is longer again and it looks a little bit more like a, a giraffe peewee. Long neck, four legs, kind of a, a elongated head. That does not seem so threatening. Giraffes are nice. It's so big still though. True. If it's a robot, Jaden, is there any way to like shock him? Uh, yeah, maybe. Like you'd have to rig something up to do it, but it's possible. As if you had the right power cores, presumably you could make some sort of electric weapon. I don't suppose anyone has any dynama control over <laughs> electricity, no? No? Oh, shucks, that would have been good. I have this power core, but uh, it, I don't know how much juice is left in it. Because it's powering the tablet. Power core might work. Water. Water? Water's, water's could good. We, could we make a pool? Or find a pool that it walks through already. Are there any areas of the landscape that it goes through that we can use to our advantage? Hard to tell from this map. Uh, The map does not actually show things like that. I don't want to move and catch the attention of more mechs, but can someone... I don't know what to do. Like, I want to see if there's stuff that we can use, but if I move, I'm probably going to clank again. (laughs) Peewee, are you sneaky? In theory. So am I in theory. (laughs) (laughs) You were sneaky until you (laughs) brought along the... (laughs) Remember about those Gales characters who have a hard time being sneaky, huh? (laughs) (laughs) The freeze are so elusive. Um, So sad. (laughs) um, Perhaps you could leave your gears here, buried in a hole or something, and then maybe you'll be (laughs) sneaky again. I don't know. I guess it's worth a shot. Pile all of my like scraps into the bag. I come back to that later because it's like my whole cash flow, but maybe I'll be quieter. I don't know. Is there anything that you do keep on you, or do you really just get rid of everything? I, I have to, I want to keep the, the sharp, my weapons essentially. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. 
but I'll see if I can like separate them and just strap them one at a time onto my belt so that they're not hitting against each other. <laughs> okay. Might be quieter now. I don't know. Gosh, I hope so. I, I could scout with you. I'm in theory sneaky. Oh no, this is gonna go so well. Okay, well, what do you guys think? Should we, should we see if there is something we can use to help us bring this thing down so we can crawl inside of it? Is that the general plan? I don't know if it will work, but if we find a water feature or something that we could get it in, I may be able to try healing it via the water. Okay. Well, I guess that's the first thing we look for, Pee-wee. I'm with you. Okay. <laughs> so are you two, like, gonna scout ahead? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I In its path. Could... Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, if you could... Oh, ooh. Here's a question. Are you going to try and follow behind it or get in front of it? I don't want it to see us. I think yeah. we should go behind it. I agree. It's going to keep coming around anyway, so... So you wait for it to come around and then try to fall in behind it. If you could roll me a uh, Gale's Challenges of One, each of you, please, with your full Gale's Dice Pool. Did we get any healing after last session? Last session, yes. Yeah, between games. Uh, if so long as you didn't take a wound, you are okay. Fantastic. Oh, um, am I rolling too? I'm sorry. Oh, if you're scouting with them, yes. Uh, if if not, you don't have to. I wasn't planning on going. I'll stay. Okay. Uh, kind of like hold down the fort. Marley, are you mm -hmm. going with them as well, though? Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, good. Well, with that role, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, this is hard, and this is stressful. Each time it takes a step, it feels like it could turn around and notice you, especially when it glitches, because you're not exactly sure when it glitches, what it's going to end up as. It could just as easily turn into a bird and be flying overhead. And as you move carefully, slowly, each of you stay quiet, stay unnoticed. But the stress, the tension of this, this stealthiness is wearing on you. Please mark those, those strikes that you rolled for your character as you Follow this mech around the path. There are a number of things that you do notice. Uh, it does not ever cross through water, but there is a, a pond, a, a good size pond, uh, not far off of its path at one point. Uh, there are a number of trees that it seems it has knocked over. L Lyra, when... When Marley and I appeared, the bot chased us, so maybe if we go and stand in the pool and set off a bunch of monkeys, it will chase us into the pool. We can lure it into the pond, and then Rowan can do their thing. We are all sufficiently stealthy. <laughs> I am now, I hope. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're doing okay right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that seems to be a workable plan for sure. I like it. Should we report back? I, I think so. Okay. You, uh, you can pretty easily find your way back to where Rowan was. It's easiest to just continue following the path to where you picked up so that you never have to like duck out of the, the mech's uh, trajectory just in case, as always, something were to happen. You don't want to be cutting back across that path, but 
uh, you you find Rowan. Rowan, what have you been doing while everyone else wandered off to uh, investigate? Um, I've been trying to come up with ways I might think of knocking a mech over uh, to make it easier to get in in case my water healing plan doesn't go so well. Okay, what have you come up with so far? <laughs> um, so far, uh, maybe tripping it on some trees if we can lure it in the right direction, but I'm worried about how often it shifts and whether we'll be able to even catch it up. Hmm, that's valid. Uh, so ha have you come up with any any plan for how you'd like to navigate this? Uh, uh, trees, you could definitely knock down, but... Mm -hmm. It's not exactly subtle. Uh... Not really. No, not, nothing besides like vague kind of half baked. Like, oh, if there were a big rock or a big tree, we could certainly knock it over. But all theoreticals, nothing that might actually help. Well, it's easy to, uh, well, hope that the rest of your party came back with a little bit more to work with. And uh, sure enough, after a moment, you hear that same rustling in the trees as you had before. Quiet, but just movement. And after a moment, you see Marley, Pee Wee, and Lyra emerge. Oh, you're back. Did you find yeah. anything? We found a pool. Oh. It's not far from the trajectory but it's okay. a little bit out of its path so we may have to do that thing where someone is bait mm. I can be bait I uh, okay. think you're automatically ruled out Rowan because we need you to hide near the water so you can do the water thing that's a good point but I'm marvelous bait I can take a hit I got a shield you do? You have a shiny shield. It's made out of something that another mech is, was made out of, too, so maybe it's... Maybe I don't think you're a very small mech. Sure. I did not Plus, I think I can run pretty fast. Maybe not peewee fast, but... Is there... Did you see anything that it might get tripped up on? If, if you can... If we can lure it out of its path. I mean, it knocked over some trees. But if we are trying to, like, move those into its path again, that's going to attract some attention. Certainly. Hmm. Maybe we could upturn some trees near the pool so it doesn't so much slip as slide like rollers. Hmm. Do we have an... No, never mind. A large amount of ball bearings? No. No. <laughs> that was what was making all that noise! <laughs> oh, look! <laughs> uh. I don't know, what do you guys want to do? It kind of depends what shape it is when it arrives as well. If it becomes a bird, that will make things very difficult. That's true. Mm hmm I guess we just... I mean, there's not really anything we can do if it becomes a bird. You know? I... Um, right? I don't think so. Any ideas, uh, Jaden? I 
Jaden's muted and pulling a really strange face. <laughs> 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 Without the audible cue, it was a really weird face. <laughs> I don't even Jayden know if I can do just it done again with us now. now. <laughs> uh, count up a creek if it becomes a bird. Bow and arrow? Hey. Huh, yeah, yeah. Something like that. I don't know. I don't suppose it looks like it's going to storm anytime soon, does it? Tie a string to it with a key and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> no storms. Mm. Well, plan bait then, I guess. It's the best we've got. Let's just, I don't know. Chop up some trees. Oh, right. what if we have oh. two baits? What if I bait away the howler monkeys to buy time to set up the trap and then Marley baits the bot and then Rowan does the thing and, 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 hey, Lyra, you've got a choice of what you can do. Terrible so many choice. great options. <laughs> <laughs> But if you uh, bait away the howler monkeys, they're gonna cause they're gonna call an alarm and all of the mechs are gonna come to you. I can Do we dodge just the monkeys? Really fast. You you can. Um <laughs> <laughs> I saw that with the <laughs> Statistically speaking. <laughs> um <laughs> I mean me too, statistically speaking. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't want to overcomplicate this. I'm not gonna lie. True. Uh, if we if we just do bait into the pond, we could bank on the water magic. But if that doesn't work, I don't know what we're going to do with a bunch of mechs trying to find us. I mean, maybe I could make a guess as to where the closest access point of it would be, just in case I could be lying in wait being sneaky uh, uh seeing if i could make my way in there but i would have to think about you know the most likely place that the access point would be i mean all right sounds good yeah what what are you going with here So, Marley, you're going to be bait in the pool. Yep. And Rowan, you're going to be ready by the pool to do magic. And I guess I can also be ready by the pool to get in there. I don't know, Pee Wee, what do you want to do? Do you want to? You, you should get in there with me, I guess, if we can, because you have to do the, the thing. Sure. Yes, I can do that. Um,. Jane, what do you want to do? <laughs> uh, I was just going to stand here and look pretty. But yeah, sure. Uh, Valid. I feel like I feel like it might be wise to just run a tripwire across the way. Just It might not be a lot, but just something. Yeah. Um, and just see if I can... I'll, I'll stand by that and see if, uh, see if we can at least maybe give ourselves a bit of a better chance. Okay. P I interrupted you, I'm sorry. Were you gonna say something? No, I I can do that. I have a bow and arrow. <laughs> yeah. Bow and arrow, he has a shield. We guess we can't lose. Okay, well <sighs> <laughs> This is the strangest quest I've ever sent anyone on. <laughs> uh, you're able to lead the group back towards this pond. You have to be pretty careful again, especially if you're not following the direct path, just to make sure that you don't 
have any mechs that you'll encounter along the way, but you're able to find this pond and start to set up. Okay. I would like to use my healing tide ability to try to imbue the water with a kind of cleansing, healing, magical property. Okay. How do you do this and what does it look like? So, um, I'm usually not, I usually don't have much of an audience when I do it. Um, and I yeah. don't usually do it on <laughs> what? Oh, it's, oh, it's okay. Do you, if you have performance anxiety, I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> um, so I suppose, um, I'll just kind of go up to the edge of the pond and dip my hand in and concentrate on the, the dynamo like I do when I'm making my water bottles and try and pull that kind of healing essence that I'm so familiar with like into this pool up from the net, the ground, the roots of the trees, that everything's connected. Yeah, I think there's like a slight shimmer to the water as you do this. Just like this, like a slight opalescent shimmer to it. And Lyra, Marley, Peewee, what does it look like as you set up this trap? I, I, have, a, I have a wire, I'm sure. Do we want to use that? Like a cable? Yeah, yeah. Wire's For great. The trip. Yeah, okay. Well, here. Okay. Uh, and Jaden will take the other side and like start to unwind it um, and go lash it to a tree and pull it tight across the way. Uh, lash it to another tree. It's like, I guess this depends on it coming this direction, but... Uh... Maybe lash it to several trees. Good idea. This thing knocks and down trees easy. It'll just walk straight through it. <laughs> he kind of like, well, he takes, finishes wrapping it around one and then goes and takes it to, to like wrap around another. Yeah, perfect. Uh, until <laughs> Lyra runs out of wire. <laughs> I never thought that there would be a day when I ran out of wire. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. So, so if it falls this way, then we should be like over here because it's gonna, and um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it kind of it comes in a circle, and the trip wire is between the path and the pond. So Marley, I guess when it shambles over here, it's all you. Yeah, Marley's going to go and kind of scout out a little bit of the path after it makes uh, its next kind of sweep around. Um, they're going to, she's going to kind of look up and down, kind of see where the best to hide until it gets here and see if she can find a convenient monkey anywhere nearby that she can like throw something at when the time comes. A convenient monkey. Go ahead and roll me a... a uh, Gail's core challenge to see if you can find a convenient monkey, please. There's always a convenient monkey. <laughs> I believe it. There's a, there's a convenient monkey, I think. There, sure, there's a convenient monkey. Where do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> um, How convenient so is this convenient monkey? <laughs> so I think what I found is I found like a little like area where a couple of trees have like grown together that I can just kind of wiggle underneath and be like down in like a sprinter's crouch. And I'm already like posting up there, getting ready to make my run and everything. And I noticed just like on the other side of that tree is just a monkey, just kind of chilling. So I'm just like, Oh, hello. Hello friend. And I just picked your rock and just start bouncing in my, in my hand and I plan out for when I run to just like toss it over my shoulder as I go. You start. So to it's not close those... enough to detect me yet, yeah. but close enough that I can 
lob a rock at it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you feel the ground start to tremor and shake as the, the mech makes its way back around the circle. You have maybe a few moments left of preparation. Are, are we are we ready, team? Ready as ever. As I'll ever be, I guess. As it comes around towards you, all of the trees in its path have been knocked to the ground, but it has more of like an elephant look to it at this point. It's oh, very good. stocky and on all fours. And as it starts to move towards you, you see it shift again, slightly longer legs, a little bit taller, and just this like massive horse almost. All right. Marley, <laughs> what do you do? Marley goes up in a runner's crouch and it's just like in the back of her mind. She's uh, just just thinking, uh, all right, all right. Remember high school running drills. Go on three. On your mark, get set. And she just tears out of the bush, stops to make sure it notices, throws the rock. And then once things start exploding around her, runs. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, for that convenient monkey roll, I'll go ahead and give you that you can just toss the rock at it pretty easy. Oh, thank you. Uh, it starts screaming, like bananas screaming, and it's just <laughs> immediately starts swinging towards you, howling at you. You move. What are you doing? Uh, I'm running down the, the course towards the pond. I, you feel I, the stomping behind you as this, this, you first, you see the monkey swinging next to you, still screaming, still blaring. And as you, uh, as you run, you feel that shift in the tremors in the ground. They pick up pace a little bit more. Oh, Marley really wants to look over her shoulder, but that feels like a bad decision right now. Uh, she's just going to keep going. And just try to like stay on par with the monkey and hope that keeps the drawing the big thing down the path. Oh, yeah. The monkey's doing that same thing, swinging through the trees and just like looking at you as it goes, just like mouth open, this scream coming out. All of you now can hear this monkey screaming from up the way. And it's not too hard to see. Marley barreling down towards you and towards this pond in the same way she barreled towards the uh, the stable earlier when she first appeared in the game. Just behind her and over the trees, you see this large horse-like creature galloping towards you all. Marley, you reach the base of the hill. Ooh. Uh, so Marley's going to just be like yelling, like, all right, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And I want to make sure to either duck under the tripwire or leap over it. Okay. Uh, Gail's court, Gail's challenge of one either way, uh, whichever you so choose. All right. I think with that, Marley is going to like do that like Parkour. baseball slide that we practiced <laughs> earlier. Yeah, slide absolutely. underneath the rope. Really hope that the monkey tries to stay on level with her and gets hit by it again because that's just going to be hilarious. I think that the the monkey stays uh, swinging <sighs> in the trees, unfortunately. But you, as you dive down under the trip wire. You are left on the ground as this mech charges towards you. Oh, nerds. The trees around you begin to fall. 
it's off its path now. It hasn't knocked these down yet. And it's running towards all of you. Can I actually take a good look at the thing? Yeah, sure. What does it look like? Um, like, it's, like does it, and, and, and specifically, does it have any convenient looking weaknesses? That, convenient um, monkeys? Stray arrow might completely disable the thing with. <laughs> okay, uh, Scrap, I would like you to roll me a, a flames core okay, challenge here as you kind of uh, investigate from afar. Okay, uh, with that success of one, uh, that's enough. There are a couple of things that you can see. First, it has a lens across the front of its face, similar to like the, the monkey. And it it seems like there's some sensitive things behind the lens that may at least help to disable it. Uh, the other thing you notice is that kind of in its, its chest is a core, similar to the one Lyra was using earlier to charge the uh, interface. Okay, 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 okay. Do you see an access panel? Maybe. Behind the visor. Okay. I'm it gallops just... towards you every just time I... its its metal hoofs hit the ground. Dust goes up. It runs towards the trip wires, and I am gonna go ahead and roll to see how it does in overcoming them. Uh, it does not. <laughs> it uh, it immediately the moment it hits them, it's it's first hoof buckles, and it kind of skids to a stop, sliding in like right near the pond. Its hoof just slowly like touches the water. And it looks around at all of you. The monkey is sitting there pointing at Marley and just screaming. But it seems to start to notice all of you as well. From its back, a large panel opens up and this huge gun comes out of it. And then on the other side, a similar weapon emerges from its shoulder and it just pauses, looking at you all, and for a moment, you see that glitch just stutter across this entire mech's body as it gets just a little bit bigger. Uh, it's, it's hoof sliding further into the water. Is it aiming at anybody in particular? They're trained in different places. First is aimed directly at Marley. The second is aimed across the pool at you, Rowan. How how big are these cannons? Big. It just got bigger with the glitch just running through the machine. I I want to jump on the mech. It's a crazy right. plan. Okay. <laughs> Uh, um, this is gonna be a Gale's challenge, and this is going to be a Gale's challenge of three. You have advantages. I'm gonna use one. I, I definitely said that before I rolled. It's fine. I'm... I will allow it. Curses. <laughs> could... could I... could I give Peewee one of my auto successes? I would say yeah, if you would like this to succeed. Yes, it's yes, I would like. Too. I would like my friend to succeed, please. <laughs> okay. Um, so, seeing that uh, the other gun is like pointed at Marley, Rowan would like yell, <laughs> "Marley!" And yeah. uh, like take off running towards him. 
her. Marley. Sorry. Yeah. Marley, uh, you do notice this gun now uh, from where you are. You, you've slid across the ground. And uh, Pee Wee, you launch yourself into the air. And you're able to scramble up on top of this mech. There aren't a ton of handholds, but that's okay. With this success, you're able to uh, to make it to the top, near, right near one of those guns. Okay, 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 okay. I have a talent, Rene. Mm -hmm. Weapons expert. I am able to expertly wield all kinds of weapons. I want to unwield this gun close to me. I want to make it not wieldy. <laughs> I feel like that's a subheading of being able to wield. <laughs> Love it. As a weapon Use it, you can expert. Break it. <laughs> yes. Okay. I I think that this is good. How are you going to do this? Are you just trying to like move it? Are you trying to remove it? What is the plan? Um Hey, this is a great big gun, right? So there must be yes. like some kind of ammo feed. Maybe I can just rip it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, with your knowledge of weapons, you're able to to figure that out pretty easily. Uh, another shower of of bullets launches from the other gun, though, as you remove the ammo. And Marley, you're hit. <sighs> For two strikes of damage. Uh, oh, could I get my shield up in there? Yeah, you you can uh, if you if you'd like. You you can to avoid more. Uh, I think that because of where you're at right now, with the minimal warning, you still will take uh, take two the strikes. two. Okay. Yes. All right. Marley is not feeling great again. Marley does not like robots. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But Pee Wee. The other gun seems to like click a couple times and it, it won't fire. Uh, and Rowan is already on the move, running around the pool uh, towards Marley and uh, the gun does not go off. You're left atop this mech. One other functioning gun that just went off. Marley, Rowan, Lyra, Peewee. What do you do now? Uh <laughs> Um, Rowan is, is running towards Marley single-mindedly. Just, that gun has gone off and sh sh she's running. <sighs> yeah, okay. Um. From the other side of the pond, uh, you see Jaden emerge from the trees. And his eyes are closed, and he seems to be concentrating really hard as these tree roots from the trees that have fallen around this mech start to grow up and wrap around it. I think I can pull it into the water. You can do that, do that. Okay, okay, uh, yeah. Yes, right. yeah. Uh. He concentrates for a moment and he pulls and it starts to slide. It, it scrambles with its hoofs and its gun goes off again and just frantic shower of bullets uh, from the other weapon that is still intact. Uh, Marley. Has Rowan yes. gotten to Marley yet? <laughs> Rowan, you are getting very close to Marley. I would say yes, immediately after this. Uh, with the slight forewarning, you're able to get your shield aloft. And okay. uh, 
it it blocks the two strikes of damage that you may have gotten from the sh- second spray of bullets. Hmm. And Rowan arrives at your side. Oh, okay, I don't like this thing. Um. So uh, I'm going to like throw my pack down and grab that like healing potion that I bought earlier. Yeah. Hand it to Marley and just say, get out of here. Go. Uh, okay. You cut for the trees. I'm going to try to go give, give Jaden some cover. You get that potion in you, Marley. I think I can drink and run. <laughs> and I hope I can drink and run. Lyra, what are you doing? Uh, I think I'm running after this stupid thing to try and get to an access panel. Okay. <laughs> you regrettably are running after this thing no, to try and get to an access it. panel. I can tell, yeah. <laughs> and Peewee, what are you doing? Uh, I'm sort of trying to scramble across this other gun. Maybe I've seen a safety or something that I could turn on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with with your ability, you're able to uh, dis- dismantle the other gun. And there's a moment of confusion as the ground under you shifts, because there isn't ground under you, Pee-wee, it's a mech, and it shifts and glitches and suddenly it looks like this huge crab like creature with these massive claws whatever this glitch was it opted for a no guns at this time I, I don't suppose that the modifications I made to the guns have translated into like you know like lobster prepared for dinner style. <laughs> Rubber bands on the cloth. Unfortunately, does not seem to be the case. <laughs> it was a long shot. And, it was a long shot. <laughs> and when the, the mech shifts, the branches loosen, and Jaden has a hard time keeping them wrapped around the legs as the legs change entirely, and he just says, What the heck? <laughs> Lyra, uh, you uh, arrive next to this mech that literally just changed shape. Can you roll me a, a flames challenge of one as you try to figure out, you've never seen a crab mech like this before. There are smaller crab mechs, not like, mm, nothing like this. Okay, uh, with that with that, uh, that five, that flames, uh, you're able to see that there is a, a long, flat panel under the base of this crab. Okay. Marley, you run around the pool. Did you drink that that potion? Uh, actually, uh, Marley is going to pop the top, drink the potion. Um, but she wants to run across the pool. Because I have, I have an ability. Oh, okay. Called, called Deep Speed which means uh, because I'm kind of a fish person in this world, anytime I'm on or in water, it makes me much faster. Okay, yeah. Uh, So I'd like like, to basically like taunt the crab and then run into the pond. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, You chug the potion and you heal three strikes of damage. Oh, I feel better. And Thank you, you, Rowan. Charge into the pond. Uh, are you are you diving in, or are you just running across it? I think running across it feels more appropriate, but I think I'm probably going to have to stay moving to stay on top. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It skitters uh, a bit as it it pulls its legs out from these roots, and it starts uh, moving after you a little bit. Lyra, you're not far from uh, this crab. And from that access point, and Peewee, you are still atop it. It is now completely flat on the top. Can you roll me a uh, Gale's challenge of one to see if you stay on top of it? Yes, you managed to. You managed to stay on top. 
uh, only sliding a little bit on this newly flat surface as it lurches forward after Marley. Uh, Rowan, what were you doing? Um, so the guns are gone. Guns are gone. <laughs> um, Marley is healed. So, um, I will, um, I will also try to, like, kind of head back towards the pond because I'm worried that I don't know how, like, all this is happening so fast, but I don't know how long it's actually been. And, right. Uh, my, so my healing tide doesn't last very long, so I'm, like, wanting to stay nearby in case the water starts to lose its shimmer. Okay. And, uh, Lyra. Want to get you up do? in there? You are? Yeah, I'm going to okay. try. So I yeah. guess I'm just going to, I'm going to, the baseball sliding thing seems to work well for everybody else. So I'm just going to like try and like slide down <laughs> in there. And, <laughs> okay, uh, this will be a Gale's challenge of two, please. Uh, with your full Gale's bonus pool as you try and slide in under this crab. Uh, that is, that is one an success. Left? You have an advantage left by my count. You have an advantage left and an auto success left. Hmm. I want to get in it. I want to. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the auto success. Okay. Okay. Uh, you there. slide in. This is absolutely uh, goes just like you've seen Marley do several <laughs> times now. Uh, and not only that, but you're able to unlock the access port pretty easily and haul yourself inside of this mech. It looks different than the mech that you live in because it hasn't been cleaned out or cleared out at all. It's, uh, the, are literally wires like hanging in the way. Um, but the interface in here is actually pretty easy to find. Um, it's a, it's a screen, and on it are a number of letters, and it seems to have blank spaces. Eight blank spaces. Okay, well. I, I guess, I, cause you guys explained to us what the password was, right? Was I there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did the same thing. I totally said seven earlier. I look. I literally look at it every single week to make sure I'm saying it right. Um, yeah. Maybe I should do that too. But you did. You did expressly say the password, didn't you? I did. Tapestry. Yeah. Okay. I type in tapestry, like jangling around in this mecha crab. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You start to type in the word tapestry as it just like this thing charges forward. It seems to like stagger in the water a bit um, as if it, it <laughs> was not actually prepared for this pond to be as deep as it is. And so water starts to come up a bit through the access hatch. Uh, Peewee, it l lurches down as it uh, sinks into this water. Uh, Rowan. The water does still have some shimmer left to it. And while you see the, me the mech sparking a bit from where this access point is open, it doesn't seem to be healing it at all. Okay. Um, it was a long shot. It, it was a, and it was a good effort um, as it lashes out with one of its claws, Marley, right at you, reaching for you and trying to knock you aside. Uh, that is five strikes of damage. Um, Got it. Additional two for the actual claw itself, uh, the damage that it does. So seven strikes of damage. If you could uh, roll me a dex... We're going to do uh, Gales to see if you get your shield up in time to block some of that. Okay. Is that going to be just a full Gales challenge? Uh, yes, Gales challenge. Mm. Okay. 
Uh, okay. Yeah, so you're able to get it up in time. It does hit hard, though, so it only blocks the one strike of damage. That's perfect, but that puts me at one full bar of strikes. So that's a wound. That is a wound. And Lyra, you finish typing in the word tapestry. And the mech starts to slowly shut down around you. Suddenly it glitches again. And actually it starts to look a lot more like the home that you have. It's not, it's again, not cleared out like yours is, but it is different here. It's no longer like a crab. It's long and old and ancient. And this interface shines brightly for a second. And in a moment, you see something you have never seen in your entire time in this game. You see the framework of it. As a pulse goes out from the interface, out from the mech, ripples across the shimmering water past you, Rowan. You see it too, that grid of lines. Whatever is under this world, for a moment, you see that skeleton. Jaden stops concentrating on the branches and roots of the tree as he just watches in awe as this pulse seems to affect everything and move in every direction. The bird mechs fall out from the sky and the trees that had been previously knocked down seem to be uprighting themselves. And Marley, Peewee, as so often happens now, you start to feel your hand turn to pixels. Am I still on top of the mech? You are still on top of the mech. Uh, it has changed shape again under you. And Lyra is still inside. Um, but I would... Rowan, do you have anything else you'd like to say as Peewee and Marley start to disappear? Um, is Marley still in the water? I think Marley's actually sinking under the water with that hit. <laughs> Um, if, if the, um, if the water is still, like, shimmering, she's just gonna kind of yell Marley's name and take a drink, Marley, Marley, as she kind of, like, runs toward the pond, like, kind of this pained desperation on her face. Marley? A Gale's core challenge, please. Oh. You can very faintly hear Marley drink. She'll open her mouth underwater. I mean, she's most, she's part aquatic anyway, so this is probably fine, but. Oh. And you start to fade away. You start to disappear. Rowan, by the time you reach the water, Marley is gone. And you look up to where Peewee was standing on top of the mech and Peewee is gone as well. Lyra, do you work your way out from inside of the mech? Yeah, just kick out the access panel where I think it is. <laughs> trudge out through the pond a little bit. Did it work? It worked. Are you alright? Uh... I think so. Are you okay? Are they okay? They're gone. It worked. You did it. We did it. What on earth just happened? And the Jada. three of you are left standing around this 
pond with this downed giant mysterious mech. The world around you, it's hard to know what has changed in this instant, but something did, something fundamental. And the friends you met are gone. <sighs> Pee-wee, Marley, you find yourself yet again in a space between worlds. Oh, oh, no more robots, please. <laughs> Scrat, are you muted? Yes. We did it! Uh, oh, what happened to you? <laughs> the stupid crab punched me with a claw. Ow. You should have read the small print. Then you wouldn't have Marley. got hit by that clause. Marley, you Puns are- hurt more than anything. <laughs> oh. How dare. And Marley just like rolls onto her side and starts pushing herself back up, right? <laughs> oh. Marley, you Ouch. do feel better. Like it hurts, it's sore, but it's- it's as if you'd never taken that wound. It's as if there was something oh. in the water. Well, good job, Rowan. I would... Can we not do robots next time, please? I don't know. I kind of liked that one. <laughs> I could actually see me playing that video game. <sighs> Did I tell you, Marley, you that I wasn't a gamer before I came in here? You're doing so well at it, though. Who knew? Well, you did real good back there. That was mostly fun until a giant crab punched me. Speaking of next time, though, <laughs> it is a little bit different in this space than it has been before. There aren't any orbs. None. And in fact, when you look behind you to see if the rainbow orb is there, the one you just came out of, it's not. Aren't there and supposed to be choices here? I don't as know. As you mom. look around, you hear a scream. And you see that teal framework, that teal code flash. All of it turns to orange, then instantly to purple, then instantly to blue and brown, and then to static. And the two of you are left in a wide open blank space, completely surrounded by the glitch. And that is where we will end the episode for today. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Hi, thanks for joining us. This has been uh, The Tapestry. I am Renee Rose, and I have a lot of fun. And thank you so much for playing in Dynama, the world that I wrote earlier this year for this channel. And I love it a lot. So it means a lot to me that you were here today. Um, I do things like podcasts and streams. I am here on Monday night as a different person than me. Uh, I play Cashel. Please meet them. They're so much fun. Um, I do podcasts like Fate and the Fable Maidens, Family Friendly D&D, and Edenfall, which is an audio drama based off of the cyberpunk game from Scraticus Academy. I have a lot of fun, and I write a lot, and I'm on Twitter talking about all sorts of things, so if you follow me there, you'll be able to see everything that I am doing. Uh, yeah, so let's go around real fast and do a quick closeout. Um, if there's anything you'd like to share, you like that someone else did today, that's one of my favorite ways to end a game. Uh, and we'll start with Matt again. Ooh, um, so I, I love, I, 
I loved how much we worked together there at the end, but especially the idea of trying to to get that pond to try to focus that magic and try to heal it was a really good just character moment that Roman did. It's like that's that is an obvious answer in game that the character would do. That was really great. I love that. That's definitely not something I would have thought of. Like that that was a ton of fun. Yeah, you can you can check me out on Twitter at Matt Hoadley. Uh, I think Scrap posted links. Um, there's my one of my podcasts called Hard Reboot, and the new uh, streaming channel I'm launching with Jordan Sanders called uh, Jam Game Streams. So check that out in, in about a week. Boop, boop. I'll be there. Yes, you will. <laughs> I keep saying that, but I'm actually like I'm gonna be there though. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, and next we have a uh, half a barbarian, Kaylee. Thanks for playing with us today. Thanks, hey, it's so much fun. Uh, yeah, I th think um, I really loved that last minute, like drink Rowan or uh, drink Marley drink from Rowan. I thought that was so great. Uh, just that moment, that last little bit, uh, you got to carry it with you. I thought that was so great. Um, uh, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Hoppa Barbarian. I also uh, am all over the place as far as my Damsels Dice and Everything Nice show. So if you follow Dice and Nice everywhere, check us out on YouTube. We've got two episodes up and they're only 10 minutes. So it's a really fast, silly watch. If you like princesses playing a tabletop RPG. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, Nerdily. Hi. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Nerdily B. My favorite part of the game was uh, Lyra living the mech skeleton. I thought that was excellent. That was just so much fun. Um, yeah, this is this is great. Um, I loved it. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for joining us. And Scott, if you want to close us out for today, uh, we'll see you all next week. I will. Thank you so much, Rene. And uh, I've posted all of everyone's links there. I think I've managed to get everything. Um, if you, My favorite part has got to be uh, uh, Lyra chasing after the mech and not wanting to chase after the mech. That tickled me. Um, that was fantastic. Uh, but great moments from all of us. Uh, yeah, we, Rowan's moments already been mentioned. It was, it was great. Um, yeah, uh, so if you want to come and check out more of the things that we do, check out our social links. There's our Discord, Twitter, and YouTube. We'll be over in the Discord now uh, for a brief period talking about today's game as I imagine me and Matt try and figure out what the hell we need to do next. Uh, but also check us out on Twitter and YouTube. You can go and catch up with all the rest of the show. And on Twitter, you can get in touch with... That's where, I, honestly, I do most of my uh, most of my interactive content. No, wait, hang on. This is interactive content. Ah, don't worry about it. Just go and follow me on Twitter. Uh, also check out my sponsors, uh, the Deck of Many, uh, who make the Deck of Many Things. And, uh, you, uh, and, and you should go and check out their Deck of many animated spell cards um which are little cards that cast 5e reference cards spells whilst you cast them they're great uh, also check out mage hand press who write extra content for 5e um including uh well, we've done something every season we've done cowboys we've done space twice we might be doing some other new stuff soon in february there might be something very new coming out which i'm not even sure if i'm allowed to talk about but hey it's horror <gasps> i did it um <laughs> Yeah, that's all the things. Uh, keep on evoking emotions, everyone. Until next time, uh, we'll see you later. We are going on a raid, so uh, queue up the raid cry. Um, convenient monkeys. Convenient, convenient monkeys. Convenient monkeys. Or regrettably convenient monkeys. running. I liked that. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> regrettably running. That's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Every day. Let's queue that up. Convenient. Oh god, I hope I can spell. Monkeys. There we go. I'm glad okay. that I built this bop into every game so that even when I do like mood music for Dynama, which was all it was all Dynama music from two seasons ago, but uh I still can dance to this one. Yeah. So uh, like I say, we are going on a raid. Uh do join us as we go and raid Dice Priory. Uh let's go and show them the love. Uh, and uh, until next time, everyone. Oh, Rasavad coming in with the subscription right at the end. Don't think we were going to miss that. Nine months. That's a stream, baby. Hit me with that name. Uh, and uh, I will see you all. Uh, well, we'll be back in just over an hour uh, with Horror Scoops. We'll be back at the same time next week with more tapestry. Um, catch you later, everyone. Keep on with the commercial. Bye.